What's up guys? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. If this is your first time joining us, my name's Matt. Behind me, my beautiful 1960s Galleon 503 motor grader dubbed Christine. We're calling her that on account of she tried to kill me when I first brought it home. And if you haven't seen that video, well, the link's down in the description to the whole playlist of everything that's happened with this baby so far. The last time you guys saw Christine, I had her sitting over here on the driveway. I broke out the steam jenny and we cleaned it all off. Got all the uh, years and years of mildew and moss and grease and rust, blew all that off, and she looked a lot better for it. So the big idea with the grader is I'm doing a light working restoration on it. I was calling it my socially distant restoration because it's only going to look good from about six feet away. Anyway, the grader has been sitting here for over a month now, patiently waiting for me to get some parts to back together. I just got called from the radiator shop today. I get to pick up the radiator. It's finally done. Today's video, we're going to do the prep work and get this thing just about ready for paint. First things first though, we're going to drag this thing over to where I want to paint it. You might remember I drug it over here out of the shipping container shop using my bulldozer. Today, we're going to see if my farm tractor can do it. It's a little smaller.
All right, well, I got the whole thing sitting up on cribbing right now. And the reason for that is that I'm gonna go ahead and pop all the tires off, wheels rather. We're gonna go ahead and pop all the wheels off and that'll make it a lot easier to paint everything when that time comes. After the wheels are off, after the wheels are off, the next step, we're going to be removing all the windows from the cab because all this channel that holds them in is all cracked and brittle and falling apart and everything. Of course, I can't rip that piece off to prove a point, but you can see like right here. Yeah, it's all just, it's junk. So we're going to take all that off of there. We'll get the windows out and uh, we'll paint everything. That'll make a lot nicer paint job too. You won't have a seam right where the rubber meets the paint. You know, the paint will actually be up underneath that rubber. And then uh, <clears throat> after everything's done and the paint is hardened, we'll go ahead and get some fresh rubber and reinstall all the windows when we do our final reassembly. Also, after the glass is all out of the cab, these old steel hydraulic lines, most all of them are leaking in places, um, leaking oil back all over our nice clean surface that we pressure washed here. So we're going to remove all of those and I'll take them down to a hydraulic shop and get those all remade. That's going to be awful expensive, but oh well, we'll have brand new hydraulic lines when we're done. And finally, once all the glass is out of the cab, the hydraulic lines and wheels are off, I think we'll finally be ready to hit this thing with a steam jenny one more time. And then we'll go ahead and be spraying paint. All right, we'll try to get these tires off here. Give them a good soak down with the croil. If you remember when I did the front tires, some of these nuts were pretty on the studs. They actually pulled the studs out rather than backing off of the stud. So give her the old soak. That's what I'm talking about. That's one. Whole bunch more to go. Don't force it. Get a bigger hammer. What is going on? There we go. Yeah. All right, see we threw all our hardware back on there, the clamps, the nuts and everything. Now this way, when I spray everything yellow, those will get a nice even coat, all the same as everything else. I don't have to worry about setting these aside somewhere or nothing. They'll just get what they need just like so. Well, we got all the wheels and tires off. She looks like I parked her in a bad neighborhood. But uh, moving my attention to the cab now, I noticed some more things that we should probably take care of before we paint it. So above the windows and the doors, we have this gutter channel here. And as you can see, it has seen better days. So it's just nice thin stuff, but I don't have a press brake or any brake for that matter. Um, but I know a couple of people that do, so I'm going to see if I can't get somebody to bend me up something that looks just like that. And then we'll cut these bolts off because I'm sure they're 
beyond rusted over they look about the same on the inside we'll cut those bolts off and uh, bolt new pieces on at the same time this rusty remnant down here is what is left of the hinge for the front window here the front glass it was just like the back one there the hinges rotted off of it i have the window we did to save it uh it was still on the machine when i got the machine but it was ready to fall off any second so it's sitting over in the building we need to uh do some work on those things too but basically all we should have to do is get some new piano hinge and uh, bolt it on here and to the window and be back in business with full glass also on the roof of the cab here we have these little trim pieces i don't know i don't think they were supposed to be gutters i think they were more just uh provide an extra surface to clamp the roof shell onto the framework with but they are pretty uh pretty rough shape as well what we'll end up doing is probably just clamping these things down welding them on there and then we'll fill this seam up with nice automotive caulking and that will keep any water from getting in there and rusting it away some more so next we're going to remove the glass and i cannot wait to reinstall the glass because <laughs> it's pretty cool it still has the original uh, paint on it from the manufacturer who was PPG, which that's a Pittsburgh company, so that's local to me. So that's pretty neat. But several of the windows they put in with that logo upside down, which just drives my OCD crazy. So when I reinstall the windows, you can bet those are all gonna be right side topwards. We'll go ahead and start by removing this back window first it uh it's barely hanging on anyways i say that but then i can't even get her to budge all right well if it's supposed to move and it doesn't that means one thing Pro. let that dangle there for a second. I'm going to take this panel before it hits the ground. Oh boy. Nice. Oh, that one's safe. Yeah, see this is what I would imagine is early laminated glass and you can see the edges aren't quite perfect on it. Well, I don't know if you guys can see. I can see that the edges aren't quite perfect on it. And that's why you can see some bubbling in between the panes right now. You know, this is early 60s, I think. I think this glass was probably a pretty new thing back then. <clears throat> Here we go. First panel is away. Can't wait to reinstall that with the stinking logo the right side up. Oh, that drives me nuts. I did it, it's the last piece of glass right here, and I didn't break anything. Whew. I couldn't believe it. I figured for sure my luck, I was gonna shatter at least one of these, probably the very last one, taking it out of there, but I managed. Um, the 
pretty cool shot of the logo right there. Hopefully you guys can make that out. It's a PPG and it says Herculite. I imagine that's the type of glass. Some sort of safe, yeah, safety PV Herculite. So that's pretty cool. Now I gotta go stack these all somewhere where they're not gonna get broken. This bolt is actually rusted down between sizes. I can kind of tap a 10 millimeter on it. Trying to be kind of careful because I'm afraid we're going to actually break the, snut, the stud right off the frame here. I do have it moving, which is impressive enough. But there's a lot of rusty threads we're cutting through. This is like the third or fourth time I've moved the nut in and out on the shaft trying to clean the threads up a little bit without breaking anything. Started out with a 7 16 and we <laughs> down to 10 millimeter to get it off of there. But it came off and that's impressive. And the stud actually doesn't look as bad now. Well, after removing the glass, I realized that the, uh, the windows were actually holding this piece of metal together. This is actually busted here. It's just a thin, thin piece of web right here, you know, because you've got these cutouts and whatnot. So we'll have to get a welder out here, a little MIG welder, and then we'll put some uh, gusset plates on the back here to kind of beef that up because it is just a maybe half inch thick piece of sheet metal holding that together there. Not a lot of support. Well, let's hope that one nut sets the tone for the rest of these, because that actually came apart relatively easy. Let me go ahead and remove all these hydraulic lines now. You can see I've labeled the uh, hydraulic block here, and then the top one is A, the lower one is B, and I've labeled all my lines here. And I haven't decided if I'm gonna take them all to the hydraulic shop or attempt to make them myself. I'm gonna take one just to see what they charge me for one this size here, which is only about three and a half feet long, something like that. I wanna say that's gonna be about 90 or 100 bucks, so. If you figure that one's three and a half feet long and it's that expensive. These guys here that run clear up down the front of the grader out of sight, they're going to be, you know, pretty darn expensive. And then there's 10 of them. So, yeah, it's not going to be cheap either way. So that's why I'm thinking about trying to make them myself. They're, they're actually a pretty thin steel. They're not thick. I think I can probably get the tooling to bend them and flare them relatively inexpensively. As you can see though, we've got these clamps in several places down here along the lines. So they're pretty rusted over. Can you see those threads? They're pretty boogered. So we'll have to, uh, have to get those soaking on some coil. Guess while we got the spray out, we'll go ahead and soak down all these lines here. These fittings usually don't give too much of an issue. I did say usually. These stinking studs are uh, so rusted. They're so rusted that it's in between sizes. I just pounded a 10 millimeter on here. Uh, I'm certain that this machine doesn't have any metric stuff on it from the factory, but she's rusted down to metric. Look, that one just snapped right off. Son of a diddly.
There we go, we saved that one. Well, 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 finally got all the lines off. I'm sure that was the first time some of those have ever been off of there. I plugged up as many of the spool valves as I had caps for, but there's still what, four fittings there with no cap on them. So I have to get a few more caps before I can uh, steam clean this thing one last time before paint because there's oil all over it again. But uh, yeah, we're, we're getting pretty close. Here's all the hydraulic lines back here. <clears throat> I'm going to bundle them together and uh, I might just take them to the hydraulic shop and see if they'll give me an estimate on what I'd be looking at. pretty good well we got that cleaned up all the bolts out of it and everything it looks a lot better I'm gonna get a new gutter for on here but I might wait till I'm pretty sure I'm gonna wait till after I paint it to put that on because that way we can get this good and coated with paint and everything and I'll paint the gutter separately um, now these things uh, I thought that this was just tack welded on here and it would bust it off or something but apparently it had a bolt through it originally but uh yeah, she broke off a long time ago, and it looks like most of them have. I don't see any reason to bolt them again, you know, it, it's, I think this whole roof shell was just secured with bolts all the way around, um, so I think I'm just gonna run a bead right down the edge and do that on all of them here. You know, same over here, I'm sure a bolt broke off, rusted away, I'll just give that some taps right here. Yep, see that? <laughs> Bolt is painted over for a hundred years. As soon as you tap it down there, it flies off. But I could just maybe even fill up that hole with some weld. That might be the way to go. So now we got my old Millermatic 135 running off an extension cord, which you should never do, but we're doing it. Uh, yeah, time to just give it all the way, I guess. All right, we're gonna run some flux core wire since uh, we don't wanna worry about shielding gas out here in the breeze. I don't think I've ever welded with flux core, so this is gonna be a learning curve as well. Kind of like stick welding with a wire machine. Interesting. I don't. 
think I like it, but I don't think I have a choice. Huh. I just think I, was, I think I might be getting the hang of it. It is. It, you just got to kind of treat it like it's stick welding. not pretty but it's Christine we'll get better as we go tell you one thing I'll give this flux core it seems to deal with rust pretty well and it likes to jump gaps just like stick weld. I guess I should uh, explain what I mean when I'm saying flux core for those of you that aren't into welding or know much about it. So in a normal wire feed welding apparatus like this, you have two things coming out the end of the gun here. You've got your wire, like there, and you have a shielding gas, which is inert, and that protects the molten weld puddle from getting uh, what's called porosity in it and is just a very weak weld. So in our case, we don't have a shielding gas coming out. All we have is this wire. And what's actually on the inside of that wire, and you wouldn't be able to see it, is a, is a core that's filled with some sort of material. I'm not exactly sure what's in flux core wire, but it acts as a shield. I think when it burns, it produces a gas in place of our shielding gas coming out of the gun and that protects the, the molten weld puddle so this is kind of an all-in-one deal the trick is with this stuff is that it leaves slag over top of the weld just like if you're stick welding the coating burns off protects the weld and then you have to chip off the slag when you're done so same thing here it seems to be working out pretty good I apologize if the camera angles and the audio aren't up to snuff. Like I said earlier, I broke the camera. It's literally duct taped to the tripod right now is the best thing I could come up with. So until I get the parts to fix the camera, we're stuck with it, literally. Anyway, I hope the video still turns out good. Okay, we got all our welding done. Everything uh, turned out good. Anyway, last thing I want to do is mix up some of that goop so we can patch up the, uh, the cab corner up there. leaving this stuff thick I can come back and sand it off later like I said earlier the tripod or the camera mount is busted so this is the best angle I can give you now oh, there we go I got them puttied up. They look pretty good. I like this stuff better than like tiger hair for doing this kind of thing because I'm not really looking for you know super smooth body lines or anything. I'm looking for something to kind of hold this beast together because these rounded curves and everything I mean that's impossible for me to patch. I don't have near the skill set skill set to be able to patch that compound curve I mean that's like a stamped piece I think that'd be quite a challenge for even a good body man anyways guys I think we're about out of time on this one unfortunately a grader is so close to being ready for paint but uh, it's like the old saying goes the devil's in the details 
a paint job is only as good as the prep work and 20 bajillion other sayings that uh, I could get lost on here. But the bulk of the work is done. Finishing touches before we paint. I'm gonna steam Jenny the whole thing one more time really well. I'll probably spray it down with some good degreaser and uh, make sure we get it all real clean. Lastly, there's a couple little uh, serial number tags, things like that, the galleon badges. We're gonna have to tape those off real good. And then, uh, then I think we're pretty much gonna be ready to paint. I think this old girl is gonna look so much better with a fresh coat of paint on her. They're, they're really classy looking machines if you ask me. I know some people don't see heavy equipment like that, but to me, there's some style about these old machines that uh, modern ones just don't have. Also, I almost forgot we're going to have to weld new studs for our line clamps back on here, too. We'll have to do that. I don't have the stuff to do it today. So, Anyways, guys, if you liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Stick around, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any more updates on old Christine here, and you'll get to see her when she's all shined up and plowing dirt. As always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Later.